What is going on, Houdat Nation? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. So we're going to be discussing some cut candidates and specifically surprise cut candidates that the New Orleans Saints could possibly move on from in the rest of the offseason process through training camps, through roster cutdowns, through all of the OTAs and everything because New Orleans has actually already started to make some cuts on the roster. So my question is, who's next? But in terms of who has already been released from the roster, Field Yates posting this just a few minutes ago. New Orleans has waived quarterback Kellen Mond and offensive lineman Tommy Kramer. So that's the latest updates in terms of the Saints roster and the Saints news and everything going on with the black and gold. And I, we're going to get into some more cut candidates here in just one moment. But I do want to do a quick selfish plug here. If you want more Saints coverage, go give me a follow. It's at TraceGerard48 underscore. I made a new Instagram account because I had my personal account. It had a lot of pictures of me and my family and my friends and all that fun stuff. But I wanted to do one that's Saints specific. And I wanted to give you guys more coverage on more platforms. So if you give me a follow uh, at TraceGerard48, you will get more coverage jersey swaps, short videos, all sorts of fun stuff. So help me out, help me build my following and get more coverage for yourself. Now I do need to make this quick little, you know, note, if you will, a community note, as they like to say on Twitter. This video is not me saying I hate these players. The amount of times I've seen on social media and the amount of times in the comment section I've seen Trace, you're talking about Marshawn Lattimore trade. You must hate him. Or Trace, why the hell would you want to trade Alvin Kamara? You must hate him. Or Trace, you hate this player because you said you wanted to cut him. No, that's not at all what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, this is a business, and there's limited roster spots, and I'm going to take the 53 best players on my roster to build my football team. So let's kick it off with running back Jamal Williams. And now, why I think that he could be a roster cut candidate, a surprise cut candidate, it's no surprise with how bad the production was for Williams last year. I mean, he only had one touchdown, and it came on the last offensive play of the season for New Orleans. Now, he also averaged less than three yards per carry, which is not good. By, by any means, that is not good. And I'm not here to sit around and try and make excuses and try and, you know, give this guy a ton of leeway as to why it's okay. But I will say this. It was underwhelming, and especially after leading the NFL in rushing touchdowns just a year before. You only have one? I mean, come the heck on. Now, to be fair to the player, I absolutely love Jamal Williams for the record. I think he's a really fun player. I love the things that he adds to the team in the locker room and behind the scenes as well. But I also think he is a good player that was just mismanaged and not utilized correctly. If you have better production from the offensive line, if you have better play calling, I think you get much better production from Jamal Williams. But I will say this, there is a running back with a similar size profile waiting in the distance and kind of hanging around. You got Jacob Cabote, who was a undrafted free agent that the Saints added this uh, undrafted free agency class, who's a inch heavy or an inch taller and a pound heavier. And not to mention, Kendra Miller has been such a fun player, and there's so much positive upside around him that it's kind of hard to ignore what Jamal Williams or not what, it's hard to ignore that Jamal Williams may be expendable. Like, that's just the reality of the world we live in. Again, I don't want to cut Williams. I like the player. I think he's a fun guy to have in the locker room. But if it comes down to who's going to get me the most wins, that's a conversation that I think us as fans in the front office needs to be willing to have. So I will give you a quick reminder to subscribe because our off-season coverage isn't slowing down whatsoever. We're trying to get to 27,500 subscribers with this video. We only need eight, so I need eight of you to hit that big red sub button. If you're not going to sub for me, sub for this fresh jacket that my guy Randy Lemoyne sent in to the mail. So shout out to you, Randy, and also don't forget to subscribe. Surprise cut candidate number two, we got Jawan Johnson on here. Now, this is honestly for me, like, I wouldn't do this. I, I would not cut Jawan Johnson personally, but there is, a, you know, a path that he could get moved on from. So let's break it down real quick. He has been a reliable player 
for New Orleans since he signed as an undrafted free agent out of Oregon just a handful of years ago. He moved from wide receiver to tight end, and to be honest, it was actually a pretty uh, seamless move. It was very smooth, and he was very productive as a tight end. And the size profile at six foot four, two hundred and thirty-one pounds is incredible. And the combination of that with his athleticism makes him a player that I think is extremely valuable, and that the Saints can get a lot of good football production out of. And he's coming off a down year, so you can't disregard that. He had some injury issues that he was dealing with. But there's also a guy in the UDFA class who a lot of NFL experts are saying might be the steal of the undrafted free agency class. And uh, uh, Dallin Holker, Dallin, Dallin Holker, Dallin Holker, excuse me. I keep saying the name wrong, but that's just me. They did sign, the Saints signed him out of Colorado State as an undrafted free agent. And this is a player who is extremely, extremely intriguing as a prospect. Six foot three, almost six foot four, 234 pounds, which is pretty, pretty nice in terms of his size. Bigger than Jawan Johnson, at least in his weight category. Uh, you know, about the same height, but the production was really, really good. He really broke out this past year for the Rams, spent some time with BYU where he didn't have a ton of good production, but he was really, really good with Colorado State. I mean, 767 yards, six touchdowns. The guy has long arms. He has an incredible catch radius, and I think that he has a very realistic chance to make this roster. So, and honestly, I don't think that they're actually going to cut any of the tight ends. I was kind of going back and forth between Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow, like maybe one of them get moved on. Because at first I was like, you know, I just don't see the Saints carrying more than three tight ends. They did it last year. Why are they? would they not do it this year? Like, they did it last year. You had Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow, Taysom Hill, and Jimmy Graham. All on the tight end depth chart. So this year, I think it's more realistic that they actually carry four tight ends again. And... They, rather than cutting Juwan Johnson or a Foster Morrow. So I personally think Dallin Holker will make the roster. But I want to ask you that question as well. Do you think that he is going to be on the 53-man roster week one? Do you think Dallin Holker is going to be catching passes on the field in week one? Will he make the roster? Just give me a simple yes or a simple no. Now Peyton Turner is a player that a lot of Saints fans, including myself, have just been kind of fed up with I guess is the right way to say it and he's not a I don't want to say he's not a bad player we don't know we just don't know because he hasn't hardly played at all he's played 15 games in three seasons he hasn't even played a full a full season's worth of games get guys and the production when he has played still pretty underwhelming this is strictly business this has nothing to do with the person it has nothing to do with the individual this is a business decision I think that a team that has financial issues cannot pay money to players who don't play football. You already moved on from Michael Thomas. You cannot be afraid and tuck your tail and run away when it comes to moving on from a first-round pick in Peyton Turner who hasn't honestly done shit for your team. And the Saints' depth chart at the defensive line is much, much better than it was, I would say, last year. And honestly, much better than it was coming into the offseason this year. I love Carl Granderson. I'm excited to see what he can do in another season with the black and gold. Colin Saunders and Nathan Shepard, both of those guys are very fun in their uh, own respective at or reasons. Nathan Shepard, a really productive defensive tackle. Honestly, more productive than Colin Saunders. However, Saunders also offered a lot you know, extra stuff where he was lining up and lead blocking for Taysom Hill, and he was lining up as a receiver and doing all this other stuff. Chase Young, really talented player that has a ton of upside. But then you also have Tano Passino, Cam Jordan, Isaiah Foskey, Trajan Jeffco, Nico Lalos. I mean, you got guys that can dethrone Peyton Turner and challenge him for time on the field. Why would you not move on from it? I just think it's time to turn the page, end the story with Peyton Turner, and start fresh. It's what they had to do with Marcus Davenport. You're going to have to do it with this guy as well. But if he does stay on the roster, please prove me wrong, Peyton Turner. I'm begging you. So another surprise cut candidate, and honestly, this was probably the biggest surprise in my opinion, Pete Warner. 
I think that Pete Warner is at risk of losing his roster spot, and I'm going to go into full detail why here in just one second. But we got some fresh hats for the summer. So if you want to get this Icy Saints hat on sale, go to chatsports.com slash Saints hats. The link is also available in the comment section and description of this video. You also have the draft hats. You got this really cool tropical hat that actually I'm thinking about getting. Uh, I'm going on another trip to Mexico, fun fact, with my family at the end of summer. So maybe this is the lid that I'm rocking. Or if you like the old school shield, you like the old school logo, kind of similar to Ryan Hammer here. It's on the helmet, but still, you can get this hat. It's pretty cool. Dad cap, chatsports.com slash Saints hat. And this one I actually really, really like. It's like a athletic material. It's really thin, very breathable, very comfortable hat. And I think that the, the script on it is so cool. I mean, this one is definitely going to be added to my shopping cart. But if you're a bucket hat kind of guy or you need something by the pool, you want to try and keep yourself not looking red like me after I got back from my vacation, chatsports.com slash Saints hat. We got a ton of hats, not just the ones you saw on your screen. We got so many more options as well. Any size, any hat, any style you want, we got you covered if you use our link in the comments and description of the video. So Pete Werner getting back on track. He is a hot and cold type of player to me. So what I mean by that, you have a player in Pete Werner who is a damn good tackler and an extremely productive football player. But then he misses a ton of tackles and he's really bad in coverage. I mean, he only had 10 passes where he was targeted and he was, he was the, the guy in coverage that weren't caught. Like that's, that's not good, guys. That, that's very, very bad. And I will say this, they added Jalen Ford in the draft in round five. They not, I'm not going to say invested like high capital in him, but a fifth round pick is not a seventh round pick. Like I think that if he's a good player, he has a good chance to make the roster. And I will say on top of that, I do love Pete Werner. I think he's a really talented player. And I think that he has the skill set to be a good linebacker. But we've been kind of playing this. He's going to break out. He's going to break out. He's going to break out. And it just hasn't really happened and sure the production's really good for him and he had 93 tackles last year he's had over 100 tackles in these other seasons and he's a good football player and he's a smart intellectual guy and they invested in him in the draft but Jalen Ford just is a little bit better in terms of the production again college and NFL very different games very different speed so it's not quite apples to apples for me but I will say this, it is a little bit like apples to pears. I mean, Jalen Ford, you can get a player who is really good in coverage, who's really good tackler, who can get to the uh, backfield and make plays, who can tackle the quarterback, and who can also just be an overall good defensive player. Whereas Pete Warner, you can see on the screen, it just hasn't been the same production. It's been good, but it's not been great. And here's the thing, I'm tired of mediocrity. I want greatness on my football team. So, again, I'm not, and that wasn't me saying Pete Werner's mediocre. I'm just, I, I don't want mediocre football. I want great football. But Blake Groupie is the last cut candidate for this video. And to be honest, it's not like a surprise that we're talking about him as a cut candidate. I mean, a lot of Saints fans were not happy with the production that Blake Groupie had last year. I mean, he was 10 for 12 from 20 to 30 yards, he was perfect from 30 to 40. But when he got 40 on, it was a little bit bad again. And, you know, he was good six times from 50-plus, which as a rookie, I'm not going to lie, that's pretty solid. But there's also somebody that the New Orleans Saints brought in in the offseason by the name of Charlie Smith. And if you guys don't remember who Charlie Smith is, I made a video about him a while back. He's an uh, Irish Gaelic football player that – was a goalkeeper and he also kicked the ball really far and kicked the ball really deep and the dude is really really good and at his scouting combine he had a couple different workouts he was 12 for 16 with a long of 50 and then at the usf pro day he was 8 for 10 with a long of 60 yards and then worth noting in the combine a bunch of his misses were early on and um you know shaking off the nerves and then once you get him out i mean he's he's automatic and he was kicking the ball far as hell but I did also, in case you guys like didn't know this or you guys missed this clip, I posted a video on our shorts tab and on my social media pages as well. So if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to go check it out if you want to see it like in you know a couple different times, if you want to see it on a little bit bigger of a screen. But I put out this short a little bit ago, so I'm going to play it here for you guys. And basically, I'm just going to be 
kind of explaining the Saints signed a kicker. Blake Groupie's going to have some uh, competition in training camp. But just give me a few seconds because Charlie Smith nails a 63-yard field goal where, I mean, he slices it into another time zone and nails it right down the middle. So let's just see what this clip has to say. I mean, guys, this player is damn good. The New Orleans Saints have recently signed Irish kicker Charlie Smith to their roster. And I saw this clip on social media the other day of him nailing a 63-yarder. But look at the bend that this guy puts on the ball. Needless to say, Blake Groupie, you might be on the hot seat. All right, look at that. All the way over, right down the middle. 159, 159. He did that at IMG Academy. He was like trying to train and practicing, getting ready to sign. This video surfaces in a few days later. Uh, well, I'm trying to remember if I had it correct. The video surfaces a few days later. The Saints signed the player or was vice versa. But point being, this video and the news came out around the same time. It made me very excited about this player. And on top of that, when I was trying to do a little bit more research on Charlie Smith, I found this write-up from the Irish News. And they said that the young down shot stopper, Charlie Smith, converted eight of his 10 efforts, including one from 60 yards. And at 22 years old, Smith has the highest ceiling out, at, out of any of the five kickers that are taking part in the NFL Combine. So I think that Charlie Smith is coming for Blake Groupie's job, and Charlie Smith even said it himself. I'm not signing to be a backup. I'm not signing just hang out on a practice squad. I want to play. I want to be an NFL football player. So pick your kicker for me. CS for Charlie Smith, BG for Blake Groupie, who's going to be the kicker. And I'm going to give an honorable mention to Adam Prentice. Uh, Xander Horvat, he's a fullback that the New Orleans Saints signed. He was spent some time with the Chargers in the past. Um... He can bring a lot to the offense. Like, kind of picture him as a Kyle Juszczyk light. He can block. He can run. He can catch the ball. He's just a reliable football player. Clint, Clint, Clint Kubiak uh, views Horvath very highly and has a lot of respect for the players. So I think that that is a move that could mean that Prentice is on the way out. And we all remember the fumble that happened, I mean, last season and just right on the goal line. All you have to do is just not fumble it and – he did the one thing you couldn't do. So, I mean, Adam Prentice, not that I have anything against the player. I just really think that Xander Horvath brings a couple different or couple different traits to the offense and adds more dynamic ability to the offense, if that makes some sense. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. Thank you, Randy, for sending me the jacket one more time. I just had to show you some love, my man. But if you haven't already and you guys uh, enjoyed the content and you want more Saints coverage, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% free, but y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.